Now I am talking about the mechanism of respiration. First step is breathing. It's completely a physical phenomena in which gases are taken in and move out. This phenomena is done with the cumulative effect of diaphragm and ribs. When diaphragm move downward and become flattened, then there will be intake of gases. This is the time to inhale the gases. That means intake of gas. Simultaneously, ribs will move upward and forward. These two phenomena has the cumulative effect to take gases in. While the second phenomena is exhalation, at that moment, the gases are moving out. At that time, the diaphragm is dome shape and ribs and sternum move downward. As I am saying, as the cumulative effect, gases are taken in and liberated out. Meanwhile, the gaseous exchange is done in alveoli. This is the alveolar region that is always surrounded by blood. Oxygen coming in the alveoli and later on that is diffused in the blood and some part of oxygen is also discharged out. Whenever you are taking air in, that at that moment oxygen is 21% in amount, but when it is discharged, only 16% oxygen is present in air. Similarly, whenever CO2 is moving in, it's actually 0.03% in amount, but ex in exhaled air, CO2 amount is reached up to 4%. So meanwhile, oxygen is taken in and CO2 is dumped into the blood and through blood that is discharged out. Later on via blood, these gases are traveled throughout the body. Second part of the respiration is transportation of gases or internal respiration. An intermediate agent is required to travel these gases inside the body and this work is done by blood. Blood has two parts. The first part is RBC, red blood cells, those contain hemoglobin. And this hemoglobin is mainly involved in the gaseous transportation, especially oxygen transportation. So hemoglobin got attached with the oxygen and a specific product oxyhemoglobin is formed and thus the gases travel, oxygen travel throughout the body as oxyhemoglobin. But if you talk about CO2 that is mainly traveled via plasma. So you can say this plasma is mainly, mainly related with CO2 transportation. And mainly CO2 is transported as bicarbonate ions. Now these gases travel throughout the body via blood. Oxygen is moving from lungs to cells. While CO2 is moving from cells to lungs.
and this transportation is done via blood. As soon as these gases are reached into cells, the third step, oxidation of food is done, that is known as cellular respiration. And this way, glucose is actually oxidized in two ways. First of all, this glucose, this 6 carbon sugar, is further break down into pyruvic acid. Actually, it's a 3 carbon compound, so 2 molecules of pyruvic acids are generated out. This phenomena is scientifically termed as glycolysis, which is done in cytoplasm. Now this pyruvic acid has two feet, either this one is broken down in the complete absence of oxygen into ethyl alcohol and CO2. During this step, only two ATP are produced. A very low amount of energy is produced and this one is known as anaerobic respiration. Well, the next fate is pyruvic acid is break down in the complete presence of oxygen. First of all, a two carbon compound, an intermediate compound is formed, which is known as acetyl coenzyme A. Again, two molecules are generated out with twice CO2. Later on, that will move in the mitochondria and its further break down into CO2 and water. Along with that, a lot of amount of energy is produced. Approximately 38 ATP molecules are generated out. So, huge amount of energy is produced and this is called as aerobic respiration. The whole step is done in mitochondria. While here, the anaerobic respiration again done in cytoplasm. This intermediate phase has a specific name known as oxidative decarboxylation. Okay, I am just briefing the cellular respiration again. Glucose is first of all modified into pyruvic acid in cytoplasm by a process known as glycolysis. It's common for aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration. Now, pyruvic has Pyruvic acid has two feet. Either this one is further break down in the absence of oxygen and converted into ethyl alcohol in the same place, that means cytoplasm. This one is known as anaerobic respiration in that a low amount of energy, twice ATP, are produced. But if this one is further break down in the presence of oxygen, then this whole process is done in mitochondria where first of all this pyruvic acid is converted into acetyl coenzyme A and later on in CO2 and water. That makes a lot of amount of energy that means you are getting 38 ATP energy. It's a high way of energy getting process and known as aerobic respiration. It's found in human beings and all the large animals while anaerobic respiration as we have discussed earlier is found in microbes. So this is over about cellular respiration or respiration mechanisms found in human beings. Thank you everyone.